Hello, thank you for joining me. We're in Chalfont St Peter today in Buckinghamshire. We, um, we just come here on the way back from Chalesbury Hill Fort, um, which you may have seen our last video when we we're up at Chalesbury, which is about four miles away from Chesham. We explored the hill fort. Well, now we've come to Chalfont St Peter. As you can see, we're in a residential road, quite a pleasant, quiet residential road. It's called Monument Lane. The reason it's a lane, not a road, is because once this would have been a country lane. We're approximately a mile away from the village centre and um, we've got sort of 1950s or 60s houses on this side and we've got a couple of Victorian ones on that side. You may remember the last video we did when we were in Chalfont St Peter when we were up at the old convent or we discovered what was left of it which wasn't a lot but it was quite impressive that chapel. We're yeah about a mile away from there because that's down in the village centre. So just coming up here is another house. It's on the front 1881 so to give you an idea how it would have been in those days it was really just a very narrow country lane where these houses are here this would have all been fields and um, it would have been a lane that sort of ran away from the village centre up towards there's a road along the top which we'll come to in a minute called Chesham Lane and a road behind the houses over there called Rickmansworth Lane and it was just sort of like a cut off and now as um, Chalfont St Peter's grown it's now one of the largest villages in England, it's um, become sort of a suburban area. It's a couple of there and there 1930s houses. I expect they sold their gardens at some point, and that bungalow was built in the middle. So we're just going to continue on up here, and when we get to the end of the road, I'll explain why this road is called Monument Lane because there's quite a good reason for that. So I'm just going to carry on. We're nearly at the end with the junction with Chesham Lane. So crossing the road here. The sun's coming out, it's a lovely day. Birds are singing. You can see they've planted all along here, they seem to have planted these apple trees, which weren't here when I last came along here. They're not all apple trees, I think that one is. Most of them are and um, it enhances the road a bit more, makes it you know even more attractive. So we're nearly nearly at the end. It's coming up to a bus stop because there's a bus, the 335 from Slough, goes through Chalfont St Peter Village Centre and it's like there's a circuit around this area. This is sometimes known as Chalfont Common, this part of Chalfont St Peter. So the 335, it kind of terminates. Do you mind? Snobbing a Chelsea tractor, interrupting my video. How rude. Anyway, um, so we're going to carry on walking. I thought she was hooting at me, but she wasn't. Um, we're nearly at the end of Monument Lane. We haven't got far to go. Um, and you'll very soon see, indeed, why this road is called Monument Lane. And across Chesham Lane, which again is more like a road these days, there's another quite large site which we're gonna have a bit of a look around. It's a site going through changes, a bit like what happened down at the convent. Um, it's not quite as historic, but well, let's get on to that in a minute. We're now coming to the junction with Chesham Lane. So um, in a moment, I'm gonna show you why the road is called Monument Lane. We're nearly through here at the end. Now just down here, there is, there's the road sign, Monument Lane, cross, cross Chesham Lane, that's looking towards Chesham, and here is the monument, which Monument Lane over there takes its name from. That's quite, got quite an interesting story to it, it's not that high, but I'll explain that in a minute. It says on that plaque, it says to Newland Park, one mile, three furlongs, and one chain. So a good old bit of English imperial measurements there. And um, it says that to Denham is six miles, oh no, to, sorry, four miles, to Uxbridge is six miles, and London, I think it says 21 miles. So it was built by H.T. Gott, restored by William Brown, 1879. So it's known as the Gott Obelisk. And if you look here, there's a picture of it, and you can see what you see now is about that much. It was once twice its height. It was struck by lightning and the top half collapsed, which is a bit of a shame. That house behind is still there. We'll see that in a minute. So it was built in 1785 by Sir William Gott, who lived 
at the nearby Newland Park. That's now the Chilton Open Air Museum. That's somewhere we might go in the future. And um, yeah, it says it was struck by lightning to half its original height. So that is the story of the monument. But now we're going to go and have a little look around here. Well, let's, before we go in, I'll just tell you a bit about it. That site in there is the National Centre of Epilepsy. Now, I'm not a doctor or very medically minded, so I don't know a lot about epilepsy, so I'm not going to really talk about that because it's just something I don't know enough about. But what's happening, I'm more interested in some of the buildings here and how the site's changing. It's been here, the National Society of Epilepsy have been around since 1892, and I think they've always been on this site and they've um, used to be known as the Connolly, not the Connolly, that's not like Dublin Connolly station, Connolly, um, I'm not saying the right word, Connolly. you know what I mean anyway, like um, it's, it was kind of seen as wrong, say like they were a Connolly of ants, that's the right word isn't it? Um, so it's known as the centre of epilepsy, but bits of it have been sold off. So here, that is now a retirement home, nothing to do with epilepsy. But some of the old buildings, quite a lot have been demolished, which I think is a shame because some of them are quite nice buildings. As we can see here, look through there, there's a building awaiting demolition, which I think is a bit of a shame. Um, there probably isn't a lot of use to them. And um, have a look there, there's another view of it. And just see on, on the top of that gable it says built in 1908 so it's over 100 years old so i think it's a shame really it's going to be demolished and then out the back we probably won't go there today but there's some various sort of um small sort of huts which i don't know how far they could take back to the 30s and one of them is um a play group when i was a child i used to live in champ street so i went to that play group it's nothing to do with epilepsy it's just that uh, um they just happen to have a spare building. So the playgroup I went to was somewhere over there. So it's either no longer standing, or if it is standing, it's probably days are severely numbered. There were some, a few years ago, there were some similar buildings here which have been demolished. And I agree, what they've built on their site is attractive. I think, although they're quite nice, some of the old buildings, probably none of them are listed. Like I said, down at the convent, the buildings there, indeed the old house, really should have been listed. It was a real crime and shame that that was demolished. But some of these, you know, I think they're kind of quite nice, but I don't know if they show any specific architectural merit or they're not historic enough that, you know, they should be saved, which is a shame to say. So there's the monument there. That house we could see in the picture is that one there. It says it's the Monument Cottages. Now if we come up here, you can see in front of us there's what is the main centrepiece building. Now when I saw this hoarding I thought, oh, that's a shame, that's going as well. But I'm thinking now looking at it, this hoarding is for what we could see round there. And um, it is possibly, at the moment at least, safe. Um, it, do, it does say, look, just so, you, it, although it is effectively a hospital, it does say, you know, you are welcome to visit the estate. So, you know, we are, this, I haven't just decided to wander on to some ground, but I shouldn't be, it is a place to visit. It's quite interesting, this one there, that's now a cafe, that building. So, you know, people are encouraged to come onto this site. And it's a bit of, it's, it's got some quite nice grounds. So I'm just going to show you the main building because that, I'm not sure whether it will be demolished in the future. It'd be rather a shame if it is. But again, I don't suppose it's listed because it probably, although it's, it's quite attractive, it probably isn't that unique, which is, I'd say it's the same thing, to say, sad thing to say. So it says NSSE, National Society Epilepsy something. So that was built in 1904, past more Edwards House. So, yeah, quite an attractive building. It appears to still be in use. So I don't think this one is going to be demolished yet. It'd be nice to think if they do have to demolish all these other buildings, maybe they can just at least keep that one because it's sort of, you know, it is a bit of history. There's a lot more modern buildings. Over that way is the social club. I remember going to a party there once about 12 years ago or so. There's um, 
quite a lot of more modern buildings there where they've you know demolished and rebuilt and then along here there's all these other various sort of 1930s buildings which appear to be in use at the moment I don't know if eventually these will be demolished or if they're um, if they can be nicely adapted to suit modern needs I don't know but it's just quite an attractive peaceful place to come for a walk really these buildings these ones here, they're a bit arts and crafts sort of style with the big roofs coming quite low down I think here this is a more modern that's a modern building that's pretty only built in the last five years but if you look it's kind of built to be similar-ish to the older buildings so um, that's quite it's quite nice to see that you know they are trying to do some kind of you know keep the style and then there's another another building up here it's a bit like um, a model village as in this not the type of model village beckons quite is but in the type of model village where you know it was a created village like um, Bourneville you know for the cabri workers that's an example of that kind of model village and then just up here is the, um, the church you can see that's the parish church this area this whole area once was like a self-sufficient farmland or they had their own farm they were completely self-sufficient had their own farm their own church so that's kind of why it was known as the Connolly the Colerny I keep saying that word wrong another rather attractive building with tall hung so um interesting place really it's um it's just sort of somewhere I've known's always been here and I've wandered through it now and then but never really thought to do a video of it but I wanted to show you the monument because I've always found that quite fascinating and I just thought well, it has been a very short video so that's why I thought we'd start in Monument Lane and um, have a wander through here. It kind of then turns into farmland once you get to there. What I'm thinking is we carry on along here we should um, soon end up back on Chesham Lane and then I'm gonna find my way back to Chaffold St Peter Village that way. So um, on the, I think there's a football ground over there, Chaffold St Peter Football Club plays out on that area there. So um, we're almost back to Chesham Lane, but I've now just spotted something else that might be worth a, a look. As I said, um, parts of the centre are being redeveloped and um, there's some buildings I've just noticed here which seem a bit out of the way from the rest of the complex but well I'll show you so look they look very much out of use so we go through here nice daffodils and cherry blossom there's some more it's like we've come to a different back there was also quite nice like when we did the convent it kind of turned into a bit of an urban exploration I'm not expecting to go in but certainly let's have a look up here so that's all right states building so unfortunately this is what's happened with some of them um I don't want to go too far round but yeah it's um derelict and abandoned it gets a bit overgrown so I'm not going to go any further I'm going to come back out onto Chesham Lane and um, we'll end the video there. So really from the National Society of Epilepsy and the monument, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.